Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, I'm going to be talking about pricing, tennis racket pricing. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so before I get started, got some new merch again, uh, new Fila tennis spin hats, got my white that comes in navy and black uh, on sale now, uh, tennisspinusa.com. Um, check it out. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about racket pricing. When I first started in the business about 30 some years ago, uh, it was kind of confusing because you would see a couple prices on the wall when you walked into a retail store. So this was way before, you know, Tennis Warehouse or any of the online guys uh, came about because um, the web wasn't even in existence yet. So you would walk into a bunch of different stores. Um, you probably see a bunch of different prices, right? The one thing, though, that was pretty common was that during a regular day, you would see something called MSRP. MSRP. Manufacturer suggested retail price. So let's say in this market, you know, like let, let's say fast forward to today, right? That Federer racket, let's say that's 249 that you see everywhere. The MSRP on that racket would be, let's say, 299. Right, 299. Okay. And so on most days it would be 299. But when they go on sale, right, they would go with a different price structure, which was MAP map. M A P. And that M A P price would be 249. And that's manufacturer's advertised price. Now, manufacturer's advertised price. Let's say they bought an ad in the newspaper or ran a television commercial, right? That would be the price or the lowest price that they could sell it to you for because it's the manufacturer's advertised price. That would be the lowest that they could go. Um, that price is, was and is dictated by the manufacturer. So Wilson actually comes up with this type of pricing structure. Um, you, Wilson says, we suggest that you sell it for $299. But if you're running a sale, you can sell it for $249. Right, so it got a little confusing there. One day you would go into the store and it'd be $2.99, and let's say President's Day was here or 4th of July and it'd be $2.49, right? Or Australian Open Special, uh, Wimbledon Special, $2.49, right? So, depending upon when the retailer wanted to sell rackets or if they had too many rackets in stock, they could easily go down to that $2.49. M map price, manufacturer's advertised price. Now, what happened to that? Well, I think up until, well, up until, I would say even a, last year in 2020, um, this was kind of still in existence, but because of the online guys uh, changing everything, um, when they first came about, um, they basically went straight to this price, the map price. Um, basically forcing everybody else, like the stores, to immediately follow suit so, just to be competitive. So basically, this kind of went out the window, like no more of that when they first came about. Because what they wanted to do was essentially gain all the business and basically make everybody sell it at the lowest price possible. Um, but last year, up until last year, some of the online guys still said, oh, this is, you know, what they suggest you sell it for. This is the price. 
but this is what we sell it for, right? But if you look across the board, everybody else sold it for this too, um, including the other online guys and the stores. So have you ever noticed that if you're shopping for a racket, no matter where you go, it's always the same price? You know, let's say, for example, this Fed racket, you're going to see this ra Fed racket for $249 pretty much everywhere. Um, not including, obviously, eBay and some of the other guys, which kind of is a secondary market. But any retailer that has a direct account with Wilson is required to sell it for this price. And that would be the lowest price they could sell it for. Repeat, that is the lowest price they are supposed to sell it for. Now, some of the manufacturers, um, when you sell it below this price, they basically, you know, there are ramifications, right? Um, if you buy it for below this price, your warranty actually gets void. So if you crap your racket and you bring it back to the store or wherever you got it from that sold it for, to you below that price, um, they're probably not going to warranty that racket because they can see that you didn't pay the right price for that racket. So be careful out there. I mean, I know uh, people come in here and everywhere else thinking it's Mexico and saying, hey, what can I get that racket for? Well, you can get it for $249 like everywhere else because that's what the company wants us to sell it for. Okay, so tennis racket prices are pretty much non-negotiable um it's it is what it is that's why you see racket prices pretty much stable everywhere so now all the companies have kind of you know threw the game away they, they stopped playing the game which took literally forever um of saying hey here's your msrp and here's your map when now everybody kind of goes straight to map anyways um they're basically just saying suggest a retail price is just this price one price to the consumer so that it doesn't cloud the pricing situation because everybody just sells it for that price anyways okay so we know 249 you get a fed racket for that price so there is one exception to the rule though uh, when the manufacturers run a sale let's say the holidays or after Wimbledon sale or after US Open sale, uh, they will drop this price. They will drop the map price and say, hey, for right now, for like the next week, your map price talking to us to sell to the consumer um, is now, let's say, 219 right so 219 but that is dictated by wilson so i don't know if you guys remember at least in the states they ran a sale right before um thanksgiving or right after thanksgiving um, kind of like a holiday sale in which all the wilson rackets were let's say 30 bucks cheaper um, that was not dictated by the stores or the online guys that was dictated by Wilson themselves. Uh, they said for one week only, you can drop the price down to 219 uh, to your customers, but only one week only. Okay. After the one week, it goes back up to 249. So again, all the places online, ourselves, uh, retail stores, the mercy of the individual company. You know, pricing is dictated by them. So next time you walk in the store, hey, don't be surprised if you see price, um, the same thing all over the place. Um, the other exception would be when a racket gets too old. Let's say it hasn't been in production for two, three years, right? You have the old model of this, maybe... A generation or two ago then um, sometimes the companies will decide oh we'll just take it off of the map price right we'll take it off of the map price 
you can sell it for whatever you want. So if I had a Fed racket here that was, let's say, two, three years old, and it's fallen off of map price, then I can sell it for pretty much whatever I want. Um, I don't need to follow the guidelines. I don't need to sell it for $249. Um, I can sell it for $149 if I wanted to. I can sell it for $99 if I wanted to. But uh, until then, I'm supposed to follow the guidelines that are set by the individual companies. Okay? So now you know why you see the same price everywhere. Uh, it's just level playing ground and fairness for all. All right. I want to thank Racket Aid for sponsoring this video. Uh, do you have a broken string or do you have a bunch of rackets that need to be strung? Um, are you taking up tennis again and have three rackets in the garage that need to be strung and you don't live anywhere near a, a place that's like pro shop like this? Uh, contact, hey, Racket Aid. They'll send you a cool sturdy box just like this. Uh, you put your rackets in there along with your instructions, seal it up, send it back to them. All right, and in a couple days, in a few days, depending on where you live, you'll get fresh, strong rackets with a fresh overgrip, right? Check them out. Great service, racketaid.com. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.